so you can be muted and you can recite along with me. Karpanya dosho bhatasya bhava pichamutam dharma samavala chita yashriyasya nishritam bruhitan me shishyaste ham shadi mantram prapannam dehi no sminyata dehi kaumaram yavanam jada yada deham tadaprapte dehras tattanam yati Ajayate mruya teva kadachi nayam mantua bhavita vanabhira Ajanitya shashvato yam purano nihan tehan yamane shariri Bhogeshwarya prasetta nam daya pahrita jeta sam yavasaya puja buddhi samadhana vidhiyati Rikrute kriyamana ni vanay karmani sarvasha ankaram nidatma gatta hamitamanyati Hivam parampara praptam nam raja rishayo vidu sakali nitha manta yogo nishta parantapa Paritrana yasadu nam inashaicha dushkutam dharma samstapana daya sambhavam yogi yogi Janma karma chame divyam evam yogi titatpata tattva dehim punan janma naidi mame tiso jana Dhadviddi pranipatena pariprashnena sevaya upadikshantiti jnanam jnani mastatva darshina Yehi samsparsha jaboga dukkha yona evati adhyanta vanta kaunteya nati shuramate buddha Muktaram yagyata pasam sarva loka maheshwaram suhrudam sarva bhutanam jatva maam shantim richati योगिनाम अपि सर्वेशा मध्यतेन अंतरात्मनो शिद्धावान बचते योमाम समे युक्ततमोमत ओके सो टुडे हु विल रीड समवन वॉलंटियर टुडे Okay, yes, thank you. Oh. Okay, so if you see now, nah, we last discussed this verse. If you compare this verse with the verse from this third chapter, you see here he is still he is telling Bahyas Parshesha Asaktatman means he is uh, is fully detached from you know, external activities, external sensory activities. Here, if you see Indriyasya, Indriyasya Arte, Raga, Dvesha, Vyabasthita. Means he has Raga and Dvesha and while, uh, while when he is engaging in the sense, sen sensory activities uh, to fulfill Raga and Dvesha, he has to be careful. So, because this third this third chapter verse it is referring to a sadhaka a sadhaka in the process of nishkam karma here this is referring to a perfected person in the process of nishkam karma so like that uh, can if we if we can contrast different verses between third and fifth chapters we'll understand how they both are different they are not exactly same Okay, so we will start today. Pro, so you can recite after me. Yehi samsparsha ja bhoga dukkha yona evate. Yehi samsparsha ja bhoga dukkha yena evate. Adhyanta vanta kaunteya nate shuramate buddha. Adhyanta vanta kaunteya nate shuramate buddha. An intelligent person does not take part in the sources of misery which are due to contact with material senses. O oh, son of Kunti, such pleasures have a beginning and an end, so the wise man does not delight in them. Yes, bro, you can read, Papa. Material sense pleasures are due to the contact of material senses which are all temporary because the body itself is temporary. A liberated soul is not interested in anything which is temporary. Knowing well the joys of transcendental pleasures, how can a liberated soul 
agree to enjoy false pleasure. In the Padma Puran, it is said, Ramane yogi no nante satya nande chit atmani iti rama padena so param brahma bidhiyate. CC Madhya 9.29. The mystics derive unlimited transcendental pleasures from the absolute truth. And therefore, the supreme absolute truth, the personality of Godhead, is also known as Rama. In the Srimad Bhagavatam also, 5.5.1, it is said, Nayam deho deha bhajam raloke kashtan kaman arhate vid pujame tapodivyam putra kayena satvam shudhyad yasmad brahma sukhyam tva anantam. My dear sons, there is no re reason to labor very hard for sense pleasure while in this human form of life. Such pleasures are available to the stool eaters, hog, hogs. Rather, you should undergo penances in this life by which your existence will be purified. And as a result, you will be able to enjoy unlimited transcendental bliss. Therefore, those who are true yogis or learned transcendentalists are not attracted by sense pleasures which are the causes of continuous material existence. The more one is addicted to material pleasures, the more he is entrapped by material miseries. Okay. Okay. So any similar verse from second chapter? Anyone? A verse similar to it in second chapter? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Of course, there the point which Krishna wants to emphasize is tolerance. Here, uh, what point? Tolerance while performing prescribed duties, tolerating dualities. But concept, concept is same, but application is a different one. Here also concept is there, but here it is like rejecting the sense pleasures, detachment. Okay, so yeah, it's told. Dukkha uh, yoni means no. It is a womb. It is pregnant with pain. It means every material pleasure, there is always pain. So, and here he, they have higher taste also. It's not just intellectually they are rejecting this, but they also have a higher taste. Nateshu Ramate Buddha. Means if you see the earlier verses, they also have a higher taste. It's not just an intellectual rejection, but they also have a higher taste. Yeah, Prabhupada here it is saying that The more one is addicted to material pleasures, the more he is entrapped by material miseries. This is, I think, supposed to be group activity. Mm -hmm. Can we do now? We do group of two to meet in that time. It's a within. What do you do? She want me to create breakout rooms? Yeah. Okay, I'll just...
I'll tell you who all can be with what. So then, wait a minute. Just a minute. I can assign manually, like, I can tell. How many groups? okay so we will have group activity we will have four groups for each of these themes yeah. uh, so okay one group can be yashraj pros group group one group two sharad pros group Group three, Shikan Pros group, and group four, Sundari Subhadra Mataji's group. So they can take each topic. Okay, so okay, group one is this. Okay, I Okay, I think first, okay, so group one, group two, group three. So these topics are there in line, so no need to write. So for each topic, you can uh, see how it begins in life, means you know, how you will get this habit and how it is suffering with examples you can give and how in it inevitably it ends for everyone, means the pleasure, the pleasure that comes out of this activity ends for everyone. And even the ability to do that activity also will end. And you can mention some you know, advanced devotees or senior devotees who are utterly detached from those activities. Some examples and some practical ways on how we can regulate it. Yeah. So, maybe for example, let's see. Okay, let me take example of eating. So it begins in life. Initially, it is a need, but yeah, generally, one may see one's parents or no, or sometimes one may watch in movies, some things like that, and advertisements on. So by that, one will get that inspiration you not know, to eat and you know, all that. You no, know, we should eat this, we should eat that, we should eat like this, we should become like this, all that. Then, how it is a suffering, yeah. Uh, it will cause digestive problems. It will make you lazy, and how in inevitably it ends. Yeah, you can. You your capacity is limited, and eventually, the capacity to digest food, you know, all that also decreases with age, like that. 
and yeah yeah there is there is one maharaj who only takes juices so hmm. pavichandra maharaj so he is utterly detached from it of course he has some health issues also but yeah so some practical ways yeah like yeah yeah once what happened once uh, he was in chaupati that maharaj so radhanath maharaj he was in he was on terrace so Ma radhanath maharaj invited him maharaj let's have breakfast Mahar that maharaj told maharaj al already i had breakfast so this is my breakfast <laughs> no walking in walking in sunlight <laughs> my sunshine is my breakfast <laughs> so like that no. so some practical ways on how one can regulate eating food so eat only prasadam eat at fixed times and if you want to eat some uh, no little opulent foods so that also have some regulation like that yeah. and yeah. you can also cook prasad and you no know, give uh, offer to others so that that desire will get more purified and like that okay so this is example so like that you can do for other things so i can yes pro now you can make the breakout rooms so we will take how much time okay 15 minutes you will take so 551 uh, 6 10 no no 6 yes yeah, 6 8 maybe we can discuss okay i'll open all the rooms yeah हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा माता जी हरे कृष्णा माता जी माता जी आई एम नॉट एबल टू जॉइन द ब्रेकआउट रूम माता जी सेम नो रिक्वेस्ट रिसीव्ड येट मे बी माता जी वी आर इन द स्ट्रीम ग्रुप ओके सो वी कैन डिस्कस हियर ओनली वी आर श्योर माता जी Okay, Mata Ji. Let's start from mm -hmm. first point. That is watching videos and news. Okay, watching videos and news. Mata Ji, can you please brief me the question? Like, oh, ah, uh, as Prabhu Ji explained, like, um, so any one like themes are already given. So, mm -hmm. uh, relating to that theme, we can answer these five questions. Like, how it begins, like. how we start watching videos initially in the name of news or you know for fun or some gathering some information like that and then uh, after some time it becomes like an addiction so how it is suffering with examples so uh, even we see kids these days now they get so addicted to phones that later on we have to go to some okay mother so this is our first point and uh, uh, we should start with this point only and uh, you are writing points right uh, i will try mata ji because even i am not clear but i'll try okay so uh, you also write mata ji yes oh but mata ji one person have to present there so Okay, okay let me write 
I will try. Oh, okay. You right, give the Madhuri. points. You give the points. Yeah, sure, sure, Madhuri. So, Madhuri, oh, uh, we can write that. Hmm. Initially, we start watching movies or some um series mm -hmm. um, in our leisure time, but mm -hmm. after that, we get addicted with it. Like uh, when I was in my college. at that time i i watched so many movies and uh, series for uh, one one hour in my leisure time but after that i got addicted with it and people people start uh, people ignore their work mm -hmm. and uh, watch movies so ye addiction ho jayega hmm and secondly we can write uh, for children also like uh, uh, when children in in their uh, very initial age like 0 to 5 so when children don't eat their food so what now this mother do they they just uh, play a rhyme or song in youtube and just gave them phone yes, yes that is also a bad practice given as in uh, reinforcement to kids yes yes and uh, and madhuri because of videos people are uh, not living in the moment like uh, uh, whenever something happen everyone this, is on their phone sorry to interrupt madhuri this will be the uh, answer to second question like how it is suffering okay 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 madhuri so uh, and more points madhuri you can say second point what you said mata ji like um, oh, we are second not living point, in the moment uh, yes we are not living in the moment and mata ji you wrote about children point yes yes that, that is uh, no, yes and not living in the moment always anxious yes yes always anxious wastage of time and madhuri ji uh, we are grabbing basically anything like we are Ulti watching anything yes so ultimately we are moving away from the things which are supposed to be done by us like for us sadhana yes so ultimately it is going to affect our sadhana madhuri ji can you suggest any example example madhuri ji for example uh, i can say my example like whenever i uh, open youtube to watch any lecture uh, instead of lecture i scrolling some internet uh, instagram reels or something distractions yes distractions uh by example i don't know if we have to give hmm. okay example we get distracted are not able to focus now mata ji should we proceed to second point suffering yes yes so suffering is our sadhana will get disturbed hmm and uh, same i actually wrote point. these points in suffering only mata ji yes okay Then, ultimately we are not living in the moment and we are anxious we are wasting our time ultimately this is suffering only no and because of this our sadhana gets uh, disturbed yes we, and we become less productive or not productive yes and next point madhuri like yes third third category book hai mm hmm how inevitably it ends for everyone oh okay this also falls in that like ultimately we jo aapne example bataya na mata ji that we get distracted and we are not able to focus on uh, uh, the things which we are actually supposed to do so we actually get distracted and we are not able to focus jo aapne example diya ki youtube pe watch kuch aur karna tha but we end up in watching something else Yes. So we can write this point. So we can write here that ultimately it leads to 
unproductivity hmm and mention some pure or senior devotees who are utterly detached from it okay mm. aditi ji isme to we can give the example of uh, shila prabhupa like how he used uh, that uh, what do we call dict dicta for uh... yes i how how he used that a gadget can we have any modern day example apart from prabhupad mata ji today's modern. example because even today we have so many acharyas who are living like very simple life even though they are living between the gadgets and uh, internet era फिनिश करो चेक इन दिन गुड so mata ji we can also write uh, is only is gopal krishna go swami maharaj because uh, uh, now uh, when uh, maharaj went back to goloka we saw that how at the end he owned nothing although uh, everything you know uh, there was uh, there were uh, all the possessions Uh, you know which he was handling very nicely but at the end when uh, maharaj will was read so uh, how uh, you know humble that will was like maharaj owns nothing apart from those deities and some memories of shila prabhupad so we can write maharaj's example also yes maharaj yes. although maharaj was also using all these uh, modern day uh, technology and gadgets also but he owns nothing लास्ट वन प्रैक्टिकल वेज ऑन हाउ वी कैन रेगुलेट इट फर्स्ट इज वेरी बेसिक लाइक वी वी शुड मेक टाइम टेबल yes making routines yes and second is we should be uh, answerable to our senior for our sadhana uh, accountability or mismanagement ha yeah accountability yes accountability to some senior or some authorities ah uh, yes yes and papa ne mera dimag kharab kar diya third is we should uh, know how to dovetail our gadgets for krishna consciousness yes so uh, selective use as per the need hmm. not for random scrolling aao jaldi aao jaldi aao madhav ji uh, i am getting a request from uh, another group fashion group srikant avante prabhu is inviting me to join okay okay so
Okay, so the group leaders that are ready. Okay, so Yashas Prabhu can present. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Jesus Prabhu. Yes, bro. Ah, okay. So, bro, our topic is watching videos and news. Bro, my voice is clear to you. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yes, bro. So, first question is how it's begin. So, uh, generally, how it's begin. So, if we hear something from someone, okay, have you watched this video and have you aware about this news? Mm. So, by eagerness, we are starting. Okay, let's see how is it and how what is the news and something so we're starting the watching and sometime we see our parents mm. from childhood okay my father is watching news how his world is going on mm. and sometime our uh, we can say our works in our okay. environment people generally said that you have to aware about the current affair what is going on this world and if you are not aware about that then you will be uh, then okay. you will be, uh, we can see, say that, okay, you will not progress in your life. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes we, if we have some seva, so we have to understand, we're watching some videos like, okay, so if, if I have to cook cake, mm -hmm. so let's see on the YouTube, okay, how it's made for Krishna. Uh, of course, my intention is not bad, mm -hmm. but sometimes we, okay, this, so we are starting with the one video and it's mm -hmm. end up to 100 and 200 videos. Okay. So it's happened. Okay. So, so second question is how it is suffering suffering mm -hmm. with examples mm -hmm. so proji actually uh, for example if student is watching some start uh, we are watching his videos mm -hmm. for just for education purpose mm -hmm. but sometimes happen it's not just only educational videos on youtube mm -hmm. or educational news on the tv channel sometimes there is a lots of wasting time like debates and all these things mm -hmm. and um, which is no any essence I saw that because I heard so many debates before coming in Krishna consciousness, mm -hmm. uh, father watching the videos mm -hmm. and news. Uh, so it does, doesn't any sense and essence. Just mm -hmm. people are shouting to each other mm -hmm. and they want, always try to uh, confront it to each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so why this, our mind get disturbed mm -hmm. actually. Uh, actually, I'm merging the both second and third question. Okay, okay, no problem. Yeah, so actually, it's uh, disturbing our mind. Mm -hmm. We are getting frustrated. Why it's happening? Why is society is full of crime and all this thing? Mm -hmm. So our, our mind get negative. Mm -hmm. So we become self oriented. Okay. okay, okay. I'll just do for myself. Why I'm wasting to do for other and all this thing. So it's bad impact. And when we are watching videos, some it's maybe see that if you are think, okay, what Sadhguru is saying. Okay, Prabhuji always said that Sadhguru is talking nonsense. For example, I'm not criticizing anyone, but let's see one example. So, so he's starting watching his video and he's asking about some pranayam and all these things. So he said, okay, let's try it. And when he try, okay, let's do some pranayama and yoga practice. So he feel, okay, now my health is improving. Okay, no, he's not completely wrong. But if person is new, he doesn't know yoga is also oh, is only for the good health. If Sadhguru is saying or Baba Ramdev is saying, it's a, both results are same. But what happened? Sometimes if we are hearing about the non-devotees, because it's a mention in the Shastra, Aveshnavana Mukhod Ginnam Putam Hari Katham Ritam Shrutve Neva Karta Sarpa Mukha that means a person who is not a devotee, we doesn't have to listen anything from him about the scripture. So it will it divert our goal mm -hmm. at the end. It divert our goal and it's sometime uh, we will go to the uh, mixed devotion, not the pure devotion. Sometimes sometime we see that uh, if we are watching the Maya, if we are watching the Mayavadi videos, so we will follow the Gyan Marga. We leave the devotional path. Okay. So yes. it's happened. And uh, yeah, bro. And sometimes if we are watching the reels, mm -hmm. because uh, today people are not watching full length video, they are just watching the reels and all this thing. Mm -hmm. So actually it's reduce our attention span. Mm -hmm. As per the research, actually if we are watching short, short videos, so it reduces our attention span mm -hmm. and it's wasting our time and we doesn't get anything. Yeah. So uh, if we 
are watching any video so it's very bad actually in the real culture it's also it's research people are research on it actually it's reduce attention span it's wasting our time and it's not satisfy us even yes. because if we are watching one reel so we just scroll down scroll down and it doesn't have any sense okay and the fourth question is some pure devotee. So uh, actually we have one example of Radhanath Swami Maharaj. Mm. So Pro Prabhuji said uh, when Maharaj is in New Vrindavan, mm. so he seven years is detached from all this stuff. He doesn't know about what is going in outside. Okay. And uh, I heard uh, in uh, one video of BBC News, there is one Iskon village farm community, mm. which is known as Kurma Gram. Mm -hmm. okay. So the people are also detached from all this stuff. Even they doesn't use any money. They are using the barter system. And mm -hmm. one person who is lived there, he said, okay, before coming this village, I am actually fully frustrated. I am using so many gadgets and all this thing. Mm -hmm. But now I'm feeling peace. And I heard one uh, video. So it's about the Baddi Grashram. So the Prabhuji said that actually we are here for making ourselves as a human being. Mm -hmm. Actually, we... Uh, learn so many things we learn how to be doctor how to be engineer and all these things but we forget to being a human okay. so yeah so if we avoid something and if we detach from it so sometimes we have a time to self-realize okay because okay. if we are totally entangled with this thing so sometimes we forget to know about ourselves yeah. what we are okay yeah. And the Pruji, last question is the what is a practical way so one can regulate it. Mm -hmm. So we know that we have to understand what is going in the society to preach. Mm -hmm. So what we can do, we can make some time slot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I will watch news and not any depth. Okay, we have just or we can discuss. We get gathering some devote information with some devotees. Okay, bro, this is happening. So we are not going to too much depth into this, but, this, but uh, we just get some basic information. Okay. okay, so this this is happened. And sometime if we are watching videos or to know about, so we can even we can read Prabhupada books to understand the philosophy. Okay, and uh, yeah, we can read uh, some other books. We can understand how our philosophies work. And first, we have to understand our philosophy. Then we go to the other thing because if we start, uh, because I heard in one lecture, mm -hmm. so one there is one Prabhuji, I don't know what is his name. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't mention also. Mm -hmm. So he's he has eagerness. How let's learn how is Mayavadi feel? What is the Mayavadi philosophy? So initially he was a very good devotee, mm -hmm. but uh, after some time when he indulged with that Mayavadi philosophy, he became the Mayavadi. Mm -hmm. So it's happened. So better we have to read the books mm -hmm. and first understand the philosophy. And yeah, most generally, I, even I uh, saw I, when I met with the Bhakti, his only the Bhakti Vikas Swami Maharaj. So he also get information to other devotees but he's not watching videos and all this thing he just asked to the devotees mm -hmm. okay the what is going on because when i first met with the maharaj mm -hmm. so his assistant told me so yesterday india and australia has match mm -hmm. so who he who won mm -hmm. so i said okay bro actually india won at that time actually world cup was going on i'm also not watching the cricket but the uh, pro said so i heard that news they said okay so that letter i understand Okay, the Maharaj doesn't watch news, but he gathering information with the devotees. Okay, so what is going in the current society? Sure. So this is the practical way, Prabhuji. Oh, Hare Krishna. Okay, okay. Yeah, very nice points. Thank you. Good examples also. Okay, so you can try to present it in four or five minutes. Okay. Okay, next thing, Sharad Prabhu. Uh, yes, Prabhuji. I will just summarize the points we discussed as a group. Yeah. So our topic was fashion. And the first question is how it begins in life. So it mostly begins by seeing others or colleagues or uh, mm -hmm. our friends mm -hmm. through social media, TV uh, advertisements so, or movies, uh, seeing movies. Mm -hmm. So it generally begins with that. Mm -hmm. uh, second question is how it is uh, suffering with examples. So, mm -hmm. so to remain up to date with fashion mostly it requires uh, money to buy anything and to 
purchase things and have money we will have to work extra so this is also a kind of suffering because unnecessary we are out to put extra endeavors to earn that money mm. then second is like uh, there will always be a fear of being outdated or being missing out of something because the fashion industry is such that it will constantly keep changing it uh, nothing will remain permanent so and it changes very fast so there will always be a fear then uh, there will be no peace in mind because as a fashion a person wants to show off things to others and his pleasure depends how others are impressed with his dressing or whatever uh, he is uh, wearing or whatever he is having mm -hmm. so uh, if they are getting impressed then he is peaceful but mm -hmm. he, so the constant anxiety will be there in his mind that what others are thinking of uh, about him yeah, exactly. and then i also heard in one lecture that uh, earlier child used to have less uh, uh, toys because more toys more confusion so in adults also we can see that if we have too much of clothes or too much of belongings then more confusion will be there Okay. so yes, yes that is one point and uh, lastly yeah. on society as uh, uh, too much of uh, clothes are getting used and mm -hmm. as it uh, fashion changes these uh, clothes are thrown away so mm -hmm. it creates environmental pollution yes. uh, to the society so yeah, that is there uh, third question how it ends so as i mentioned it requires lakshmi mm -hmm. and uh, it is not that we will have uh, unlimited lakshmi so ultimately we will have to stop somewhere because we can't spend keep on spending lavishly on these things mm -hmm. then uh, uh, second thing is as uh, industry says that it will constantly keep changing so uh, ultimately we have to stop somewhere mm -hmm. then fourth is examples mm -hmm. so we have written the examples of all the brahmacharis and sanyas because no one Follows that anyone are grastas as well. So we have written an example of Anand Rundan Prabhuji. If you mm -hmm. very emphasized speaks on that, mm -hmm. uh, if you don't have money mm -hmm. and if you don't have uh, that adhikar to buy things, then just mm -hmm. don't do it. Don't try to impress others at all. Mm -hmm. I also remember uh, I forgot the name of Prabhuji, who is a Brahmachari in NVC Shasam. So he was in mm -hmm. Singapore for job, and he was mentioning that. while he was on job he, his purpose was clear that he has to join ashram as soon as possible mm -hmm. and he has to earn and save money so he he mentioned that he was there uh, two years and whole two years he uh, used only two pair of clothes and he was he joined ashram in that uh, those two pairs only so we can see from this doubt is that we can remain uh, limited to these things mm -hmm. nice then last practical ways to regulate it mm -hmm. so first we have written that mm -hmm. first of all we should try to remain aloof from this unnecessary social media advertisement tv and movies mm -hmm. which bombards uh, our uh, intelligence mm -hmm. then if we should buy things only if it's are really necessary mm -hmm. and if it's not required then we should try to avoid and if we have extra clothes or extra things then we should try to donate to ngos so that that habit of donating and giving uh, away something um, the habit of donating will also be developed mm -hmm. then we should also uh, try to sharpen our intelligence with scriptures because uh, if you we can see that no one has ever become happy by just by ac ac uh, accomplishing this uh, by uh, what we say just uh, collecting these things no one will no one has ever become happy so we should try to read scriptures and sharpen the intelligence yeah. and i have also heard from Ma radna swami maharaj that more we have more we will suffer okay. so yes we yes. should try to uh, sharpen the intelligence in that way and try to regulate it okay yes bro thank you thank you very nice points very nice insights okay thank you Okay, next Shrikant Prabhu for gadgets and comforts. Yeah, hi Shrikant Prabhu. Uh, yeah, I would like to summarize on behalf of uh, Archana Mataji, Shrikant Puram Prabhu, and Ishaya Mataji. So, uh, yes, Prabhu, I think most of the points are common for videos and news because gadgets. What we picked were like mobile being the uh, topmost gadget and comfort. Uh, 
which is like most suitable uh, so yes prabhu so how it begins i think gadgets uh, anything you pick it starts with necessity mm. um, everyone thinks mobile today like even in covid it was needed for online study even for students mm. um, then we need it for getting all the information all the communication happens through uh, whatsapp we need it for online payment uh then for knowing the road we need the maps so multiple dependencies it starts with necessity um for suffering uh the many examples uh first is like uh, the most common with mobile is that the time is wasted a lot in the reels i mean we keep feeling that in next 2 minutes we'll get enjoyment in next 2 minutes we'll get enjoyment and like that after 2 hours we feel that there was no enjoyment so and we feel we have a lot of time wasted a lot of uh, late night sleeping uh, because of using of mobile a um, lot of unwanted garbage goes into the mind uh, which is bombarded we may not have searched for it but we watch it and it goes inside our minds um prabhu ji has made a very good point that you know uh, the mobile doesn't become our servant i mean slave but we become the slave of the mobile eventually so whenever it rings we have to pick him up whenever it says oh please pick me up i have to pick him up it will ring we'll have to pick him up so like that nice point uh and there are a lot of like in students we see a lot of addiction in playing games uh they start for their studies uh, but eventually they'll end up playing some games and have, we have seen like a lot of students and even working people they are like addicted to these games uh and yes some of them like they get isolated from families and social life because they're always in the mobile even while eating their into their mobiles mm-hmm. always so there is a like photo when all are meeting get together and everyone is in their mobile only no one is talking to each other mm-hmm. so that one uh, memory is reduced because mm-hmm. earlier we used to remember everyone's numbers and all mm-hmm. uh, but now even our own spouse numbers sometimes we don't remember so mm-hmm. we have like memory is reduced drastically mm-hmm. uh, yeah how it ends uh, for everyone um how many it doesn't end if they just keep using mobile but uh, most common reason which we thought is that uh, it starts with the health problems uh, doctor says that you know if you don't sleep on time if you don't eat on time and all uh, you will have problems so you have to restrict your uh, mobile usage gadget usage and all uh, sometimes people have eye eyes problem a lot of strain on the eyes and all uh, people become very lazy and all because everything they can order online <laughs> and within 10 minutes it will be delivered to you mm-hmm. so uh, laziness is one thing so i think mm-hmm. all these problems uh, that is when it will end mm-hmm. when someone faces the problem mm-hmm. uh, mention pure devotees senior devotees who are detached from it i think uh, we have a lot of examples of our senior brahmacharis mm-hmm. uh, mata ji gave one nice example archana mata ji that in goa the nico village the gadgets and mobiles they don't work so mm-hmm. uh we automatically get detached <laughs> from it uh even i have seen in voice uh, whenever i have to message anyone mm-hmm. i have they have a common phone uh, so everyone will use a phone which is not smartphone mm-hmm. uh, but they'll have one common smartphone for all the voice devotees so if i have to send anything i have to send it on that common phone <laughs> so that's a nice example of our devotees how they are practicing uh, parallel ways of how to regulate it is as i think yes raj prabhu also mentioned is that <clears throat> we should have some fixed timings mm-hmm. like between this and this i'll watch my mobile and reply to everyone's messages mm-hmm. only in that fixed time otherwise anyone can send us message on any time of the day and we get distracted and many times it has happened with me i open the phone to reply to the message mm-hmm. uh, and i just forget why i had picked up the phone <laughs> without replying to the message i'll read all the other messages mm-hmm. and i forget why i oh, mm-hmm. oh, uh yeah and like amog lila prabhu in one of his class mentioned that uh, no mobile while chanting right so you can keep a mobile which is not accessible at all we cannot unless you get up and on mm-hmm. so yes and it should be used only in service we can see whenever we are using is it in service or it's just for our enjoyment so these okay. three points i do it is give speak thank you thank you very nice points okay okay yashas bro want to add something uh yes really actually uh, i remember one thing i heard in lecture of Aush- his grace amog lila pro he said in the uh, initial days people have book on his on their face mm-hmm. but now people are indulge in the facebook <laughs> okay 
Yes, bro. Okay, thank you. Nice. Okay. No. Okay, fine. Okay, now, yeah, Sundari Subhadra Mataji. But the name, fame, social status. Prabhuji, I was not able to uh, join the group on time. I just was there for last few minutes and there was no discussion because of audio issues. Oh, really? So I just was able to discuss this first point that is watching videos. Watching videos you discuss, no? Only with one Mataji who was like me, she was not able to join any breakout room. Oh, really? Okay, no problem. Mataji, I think Priya Mataji and Hembata Mataji, they were discussing. So if they, anybody out of them can present that can be done. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, Prabhuji, I even could not join. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe you came late, I think. Okay, yeah. maybe in fame social status. It is a little bit similar to fashion. Yes. Things in life by seeing that, no? By seeing those who are famous, they are happy. So one may get inspired, know that we also should become famous. So one tries to impress people. Maybe uh, one is through whatever opulence, wealth, education, uh, whatever opulence, strength. One one tries maybe different ways and all. But yeah, lot of effort, but no, very less result. And even if result comes and a lot of effort is needed to maintain it, so that way it is suffering. Mm -hmm. And it ends because someone else will come who is better than us. And no, so like that, our talents will get outdated and all. So that way, yeah, some pure senior, yeah, there are even devotees who doesn't even want to do deity worship, you no, know, on holidays, on festival days. They want to only do background services. Means they want to do like show to show chair and all when altar is closed. So that way, yeah. Some practical ways on how we can regulate it. Yeah, we can. We can try to give credit to others. We can try doing menial services and all so that we will understand. They also through them also we can become happy. That way, slowly it will reduce. Okay, thank you. We have spent quite some time, but yeah. Probably for the third question, you said that uh, like we are replaceable. Yes, yes. For the third question, like how inevitably it ends for everyone, so ultimately, uh, fame is replaceable, right? Fame is replaceable. Yeah, we may be also replaceable. <laughs> For us, and yeah, we have a position, and all the position will end, and you know, someone else will take the position. We will become outdated. So, even if some, you know, if you take example of movie stars or something, they may be famous. They can all be famous till at most forty years. After that, they have to go on. So that way. what we are famous for, so that will get exhausted. So, we'll go on. Okay. Like yesterday only I was hearing this verse. So in every type of you know, sense gratification, there is some fear. Like, boge roga bayam, maybe I'll read the translation. In enjoyment, there is fear of disease. It refers to eating, especially. In family reputation, there is fear of falling. In wealth, there is fear of kings. They may tax. In prestige, there is fear of humiliation. Yeah. In So... Especially now the influencers and all, they are always worried, no? Who is commenting on what and all that. In power, there is fear of enemy or adversary. Yeah. In beauty, there is fear of old age. In scriptural erudition, there is fear of learned opponents. In virtue, there is fear of wicked, vilifying person. In body, there is fear of death. For human beings, everything in this world is coupled with fear. Okay. Maybe we'll proceed. Yes, yeah. yeah, Sharad Prabhu can recite after me. Shaknoti haiva yasodam prakshirira vimokshana. Shaknoti haiva yasodam prakshirira vimokshana. Kama krodod bhavam vegam sayukta sasukinaraha. 
How can the translation? Before giving up this present body, if one is able to tolerate the urges of material senses and check the force of desire and anger, he is well situated and is happy in this world. Yeah. So now, even when somebody has perfected also, there will be there. There will be some uh, still some tinge of as long as one is involved in the material world, now there will be some uh, temptation. If you see in the third chapter, the uh, uh, lust is described in that you know in that context as you know, as a you know unending fire. It's like you know, it's like a unending fire. It's like a very intense fire. You know, it's a it's a very formidable enemy and all. But now here the word used is vega means it's just a pushing, little bit pushing. So. So like no once uh, once in a while one may get the pushing you no know, to answer nature's call so it will it will like that but so the intensity has you no know, greatly reduced but still it is there so so how one will tolerate that because of the spiritual taste yukta sa yukta so then he will be able to tolerate shodam refers to ability to tolerate then he will be happy. So and you will be happy while while tolerating sukha. Okay. Yes, bro. You can read purport. If one wants to make steady progress on the path of self-realization, he must try to control the forces of the material senses. There are the forces of talk, forces of anger, forces of mind, forces of the stomach, forces of the genitals, and forces of the tongue. One who is able to control the forces of all these different senses and the mind is called Goswami or Swami. Such Goswamis live strictly controlled lives and forgo altogether the forces of the senses. Material desires, when unsatiated, generate anger and thus the mind, eyes, chest become agitated. Therefore, one must practice to control them before one gives up, gives up this material body. One who can do this is understood to be self-realized and thus uh, and is thus happy in the state of self-realization. It is the duty of the transcendentalist to try strenuously to control desire and anger. Yeah, so one should try strenuously, should try by all means. So yeah, like you have told all many ways for different things. So one should try strenuously to control desire and anger. So it's a lifelong endeavor. It doesn't happen overnight. But one should see over the time, no, the intensity is reducing in some way or other. No? Maybe over years like that. Every year one can check with time, intensity and frequency of temptations reduce. Intensity as well as the frequency of temptations should reduce. And the ability and the ease. So ability means you have more knowledge, you have more inspiration and you are more engaged. So you have made more reasons to avoid it. And ease. So ease of tolerance also. Yes. Okay. So then <clears throat> again, again Krishna is describing his internal state of consciousness. Yontasuka antaramas tatantara jyotirevaya Yanto Sukhantara Atma Aramas Tathantara Jyotir Evaya Sayogi Brahma Nirvanam Brahma Bhuto Di Gachati Sayogi Brahma Nirvanam Brahma Bhuto Adi Gachati One whose happiness is within, who is active and rejoices within and whose aim is inward is actually the perfect mystic. He is liberated in the Supreme and ultimately he attains the Supreme. Yes, bro, you can read the purport. Unless one is able to relish happiness from within, how can one retire from the external engagements meant for deriving superficial happiness? A liberated person enjoys happiness by factual experience. He can therefore sit silently at any place and enjoy the activities of life from within. Such a liberated person 
no longer desires external material happiness. This state is called Brahma Bhuta, Bhagavad Gita 18.54, attaining which one is assured of going back to Godhead, back to home. Yeah. So actually, there are two types of liberation. So one is when when one is alive, means one is in the body only, he gets liberated, which means he loses all the desire to uh, <clears throat> enjoy anything, you know, to do any sensory activities, and he's fully focused on the absolute truth, on meditating on the absolute truth and the philosophy of the absolute truth. So he's he in that sense, in that condition also, he's liberated, and his all you know previous karmas and all are you know fully nullified by his spiritual advancement. So he's called a Jeevan Mukta. And one, and another type of liberation is when at the time of death, he leaves the body and you know, goes to the spiritual realm. So that is another type of liberation. So if he is, you know, if he is ex fully experiencing happiness within, he is like a qualified candidate for liberation. Now he is also telling only such people can actually perform true welfare work. Labante Brahma Nirvanam Vrshayakshina Kalmasha Yes, Sharad Pro, you can reset. Stay on. Sorry, Pro, I was on mute. Labante Brahma Nirvanam Vrshayakshina Kalmasha Chinnadvaida yatatmana sarvabhuta hiterata. Chinnadvaida yatamana sarvabhuta hiterata. Okay, the translation. Those who are beyond the dualities that arise from doubts, whose minds are engaged within, who are always busy working for the welfare of all living beings, and who are free from all sins, achieve liberation in the Supreme. Yes, you can read the highlighted portions. When a person is actually in the knowledge that Krishna is the fountainhead of everything, even when he acts in that spirit, he acts for everyone. The sufferings of humanity are due to forgetfulness of Krishna as the supreme enjoyer, the supreme proprietor, and the supreme friend. Therefore, to act to revive this consciousness within the entire human society is the greatest welfare work. One cannot be engaged in such first-class welfare work without being liberated in the Supreme. A Krishna conscious person... Uh, uh, shall I read this? Or? Yeah, no, next highlighted portion. A person engaged only in ministering to the physical welfare of human society cannot factually help anyone. Temporary relief of the external body and the mind is not satisfactory. The real cause of one's difficulties in the hard struggle for life may be found in one's forgetfulness of his relationship with the Supreme Lord. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, so Prabhupada is saying to act to revive this consciousness within the entire human society is the highest welfare work. So, because this is the root of all forget all sufferings of humanity. So, yeah, so the again, so then Prabhupada is clarifying. That the physical welfare work, it cannot factually help anyone because if you provide food, you know, again tomorrow they will be hungry. Okay, at no, okay, you provide education. It may help them to some extent in their life. But after that, they will be dissatisfied. In the old days, they will be confused what to do. So, it's only temporary relief. It's not satisfactory. The real cause of one's difficulties is the hard struggle for life may be found in one's forgetfulness of his relationship with Supreme. So this is the highest welfare activity. So yeah, so <clears throat> so for compassion, so purity is needed. Purity is you know like Rishak Rishaya Shina Kalmasha. So that purity is needed. Like if you are pure in heart, then only we can actually, you know, preach or you know, show compassion. Then clarity. So for, there should not be any confusion about, you know, what is important in life, what is the most important thing in life, and all that. That 
clarity should be there. Then sensitivity means you know you will feel for others. You will see suffering and you, know, you will feel you can feel the pain in which they are undergoing. So then you can be really compassionate. So so that's why a very advanced devotee can you not know, really be really compassionate. You may be able to feel the pain you know, that they are suffering uh, because of we, we may cannot we may relate to only to some extent suffering we may try to intellectually analyze how it is a suffering and all of course that's what we did just now now how this activity is suffering and all but actually uh, we we cannot understand how the soul is suffering because it is separated from krishna so unless someone who has you no know, who has attained krishna then he can understand how he was suffering you know, throughout his life without Krishna. So then, then he can also see how others are also suffering without Krishna. So, so that's a very advanced level of sensitivity. In that sense, actually, Vaishnava is called a Paradukka Dukki. So, so we may not... So that's why a very advanced devotee can actually be you know, compassionate. So that's what like you no know, made Prabhupada even there were heart attacks and you know, all obstacles. What all obstacles one can face in life, Prabhupada in one sense has faced. But because he has that level of compassion, so he, he could go on and you know, he could sacrifice his sleep and you know, he could do that things. But at our level, at least we should we can try to have clarity in terms of knowledge and sensitivity we can try to cultivate and at least may not be at a very advanced level, but to some extent. And purity as much as possible. And of course, we ourselves are not, we are repeating the words of previous Acharyas and, and try to be compassionate in whatever it is. Then uh, <clears throat> the next was discuss how the Lord delivers such, such a perfected soul, not having all these symptoms. Kama Krodha Vimukta Nam Yati Nam Yata Cheta Sam Kama Krodha Vimukta Nam Yati Nam Yata Cheta Sam Abhito Brahma Nirvanam Vartate Viditatma Nam Abhito Brahma Nirvanam Vartate Viditatma Nam Yeah, so these are all like no descriptions of a very advanced uh, karma yogi. Uh, it will also match to some extent with an advanced devotee practicing devotional service also. But we may think, okay, these are all for advanced devotees, why we have to read and all. Uh, so, <clears throat> so like, uh, Chaitanya Janpur once told me, like, uh, so the descriptions of a seer are prescriptions for a seeker. Means, so these descriptions are like the ideals for us, for sadhikas. So we should see how we can go towards that. Yeah, some things happen naturally by spiritual advancement, but we can also try to cultivate. Also. Okay, so the translation, those who are free from anger and all material desires, who are self-realized, self-disciplined and constantly endeavoring for perfection are assured of liberation in the supreme, in the very near future. So, Prabhupada is saying self-discipline and constantly endeavoring. That's an important thing. Yes, Prabhupada, you can read. Darshana dhyana samsparshare matsya kurma vihagama swani apatyani kushnati kushnati tataham apipadmaja by vision, by meditation, and by touch only do the fish, the tortoise, and the birds maintain their offspring. Similarly, do I also, O Padmaja. The fish brings up its offspring simply by looking at them. The tortoise brings up its offspring simply by meditation. The eggs of the tortoise are laid on land, and the tortoise meditates on the lake eggs while in the water. Similarly, the devotee in Krishna consciousness, although far away from the Lord's abode, can elevate himself to that abode simply by thinking of him constantly, by engagement in Krishna consciousness. 
he does not feel the pangs of material miseries this state of life is called brahma nirvana or the absence of material miseries due to being constantly immersed in the supreme yeah so so if one endeavor sincerely if you see this whole chapter or if you see the third chapter to fifth chapter so there are no gradual progress so that shows how if we endeavor sincerely we it will bear fruit for sure so the verse says in that so vartate vidyut atma means it will happen for sure in your future yeah of course if you you'll also read okay and no d yeah little bit you'll read of course if you read madhuri kadamni also you will understand how there are different stages and you, know, you can understand okay we, which stage maybe we are and you know, there is if you do if you follow the process then it will be there because it is a science it is not some sentiment or you no know, something random it is a science and it is in the fourth chapter we have read bahu gyan tapasa means many people have followed this process and attained perfection in the uh, in the previous times so it is a science and it will work for sure yeah for different people different devotees it may take different time but it will work for sure okay now in the next verse now he has perfected nishkam karma yoga which means what his antakarana is purified his his heart and no mind intelligence are his heart and intelligence are purified intelligence is purified so now he has now decided that it is enough for the of this world so now he is renouncing his prescribed duties and he wants to you know completely meditate completely spend time in meditation and study so that thing is being discussed described now sparsham krutva bahir bahyam chakshush chaivantar bhruvo sparsham krutva bahir bahyam chakshu chaivantare bhruvo pranapanno samokrutva nasyabhyantara charino pranapanno samokrutva nasa bhyantara shunning out all external sense objects keeping the eyes and vision concentrated between the two eyebrows suspending the inward and outward breathe breathing within the nostrils and thus controlling the mind senses and intelligence the transcendentalist aiming at liberation becomes free from desire fear and anger vigateccha bayakrodu so one who is always in this state is certainly liberated so now He is stopping nishkama karma yoga and slowly shifting towards jnana yoga and gyan yoga. So, sense objects, how they are dealt in nishkama karma yoga? So, nishkama karma yoga, one is engaging with the sense objects with no fruitive mentality. So, by that, what he will get? He will get, he will realize atma gyan and his purification of heart and intelligence, mind, etc. And ashtanga yoga. so mind is fully purified so so he he just wants to concentrate on the atma so for him sense objects are a distraction so nishkam karma yoga sense objects are a means because he engages with the sense objects and performs his duties he will get purified but in ashtanga yoga sense objects are a dis- distraction that will also come in the next chapter this we can read the highlighted portion after explaining the above principles of liberation in the supreme the lord gives instructions to arjuna as to how one can come to that position by the practice of the mysticism or yoga known as ashtanga yoga which is divisible into eight fold procedures called yama niyama asana pranayam pratyahar dharana dhyan and samadhi in the sixth chapter the subject of yoga is explicitly detailed 
and at the end of the fifth, it is only preliminary explained. One has to dry out this sense object such as sound, touch, form, taste, and smell by the pratyahar process in yoga, and then keep the vision of the eyes between the two eyebrows and concentrate on the tip of the nose with half half closed lids. There is no benefit in closing the eyes altogether because then there is every chance of falling asleep. Nor is there benefit in opening the eyes completely because then there is hazard of being attracted by sense objects. The breathing movement is restrained within the nostrils by neutralizing the up-moving and down-moving air within the body. By practice of such yoga, one is able to gain control over the senses, refrain from outward sense objects and thus prepare oneself for liberation in the Supreme. Yeah. So, as discussed, of course, in the fourth chapter also we discussed, uh, pranayam, it helps in controlling the mind. Uh, if it is needed, one may do it before japa and all, but, yeah. but one should have proper understanding of what is what. So, that is there. And uh, also about closing eyes, yeah, that possibility is there. One may fall asleep, especially if one has not slept properly. Uh, so, or if one has not got proper sleep. Uh, so, uh, so that's why it should be half closed. So, some devotees told if you see the ground or if you are seeing mantrakar, then also it is like half closed eyes. It's not fully open eyes. So, that is there. <clears throat> okay, this yoga process helps one become free from all kinds of fear and anger and thus feel the presence of super soul in the transcendental situation. Now he is describing the dhyana yoga. So that we will see in the next chapter fully. Now there is a little description of the Paramatma whom he is wanting to meditate. So, Bhuktaram Yajya Tapasam Sarva Loka Maheshwaram Bhuktaram Yajya Tapasam Sarva Loka Maheshwaram Sukhrudam Sarva Bhutanam Gyatva Maam Shantim Ritchati Shurudam Sarva Bhutanam Gyatva Maam Shantim Ritchati Again if you see here Krishna has used the word Maam means Krishna slowly is indicating no, that I am only that Supreme Lord. But actually he tells directly only in the 10th chapter. But slowly, he slowly he tells. Of course, in the next uh, 7th, 8th, 9th, it is a little more the frequency will increase. Okay, so the translation. A person in full consciousness of me, knowing me to, the, to be the ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices and austerities, the Supreme Lord of all planets and demigods and the benefactor and well-wisher of all living entities attains peace from the banks of material miseries. So, <clears throat> so initially he told about the ultimate beneficiary of sacrifice and austerities. So that is uh, referring to Karma Yoga. So if one understands that Lord is the enjoyer, so then one will relinquish his own enjoyership. Then austerities. So, so uh, sacrifice and, uh, and austerities. No? Bhuktaram yajna and tapasa. So, tapasa is referring to jnana yoga. So, it helps one relinquish doership. So, not by the power of tapasya, but the grace of Lord. Means, Lord actually, if he, if he is pleased with our tapasya, by his grace, one will attain success in tapasya. Not by one's effort. So, that way, one can relinquish one's doership. And he is the lord of all planets, so Ashtang Yoga. So one, so this will help one lose attraction to mystic siddhas. So these three understandings about lord, it will help. So with this understanding and realization, so it's not just a theoretical understanding, but when one actually realizes it, so then a yogi will attain liberation. So here Shanti is referring to liberation. Of course, you can take Shanti as peace of mind and you can also explain this verse. That's okay, but in the context, it is referring to liberation. Okay, yes, yes, sir, do you have some question? Your voice is not clear. Now it's clear now? Yeah, yeah, now it's better. Yeah. So, my question is, so sometimes some meditation person 
who are reading the Bhagavad Gita, they quoted the same loka. So mm -hmm. they said, okay, Krishna asking about the meditation. So why are you doing Kirtan and all these things? Sometimes we explain that, no, it's a Yuga Dharma. So you have to do the Kirtan. But uh, what should be the practical answer, Prabhuji? Yeah, means what can be conclusion uh, comes in the Bhakti, na? Manmana Bhagavad Bhakti Madhya. And then he tells us. Yes, Prabhuji, but uh, they said, okay, but when we are doing meditation, mm -hmm. so we feel the peace. Okay, the, the Kirtan is also good, they said, but still Krishna mentioned the Bhagavad, in the Bhagavad Gita, okay, you do the Dhyan Yoga and Pranayam, Pranvayu, Apanvayu and all these things. So, ji, what can we give the practical answer, which is shows that, or we, we because we sometimes we cannot refuse them, but they can be bewildered situation no, for it's, them it's always not good to be bewilder if you say like uh, so see everyone has a different type of sukruti and, so see, uh, someone will only take to bhakti and sukruti you will see in the seven chapter actually no? that chaturvida bhajante maam jana sukriti no arjuna artho artate jignasur gyani cha baratarshaba so in that shloka no, the main word actually is sukriti no? So if someone has that sukruti, they may do that. Like, yeah, meditation, you can say, you can try to meditate on something you no know, positive. So you can meditate maybe on Krishna or you can also chant on the mantra. You can meditate on the mantra. So that will give you more, it will give you more focus and you know, more purification. Maybe something like that, you may connect them in some way to devotional service. Yeah, you can try to present it theoretically and you know, logically. But... Yeah. We should not uh, prematurely hurt them or you know, try to prove unnecessarily you know, they are wrong or something. But uh -huh. again, in Dhyana Yoga, many other things are there. You know? Before meditation, you should uh, you know, have Yam, Niyam, all those. Those things you can do. Uh, yes, we, because we generally ask about the mantra meditation and we give the scientific presentation to them. Okay, this is scientifically proved. So, audio wave, uh, wave frequency have another benefit. Uh, but, Roji, sometimes it's not easy to convince to all of them. That's okay, means, see, they should have Sukruti, ultimately. Mm -hmm. uh, if they if they are inspired by you know, something, means they may have some previous affiliation with you know, some, something, you know, Dhyana Yoga and all, maybe coming from previous life. So, it may take time and all. You have to be patient and all. Okay. Uh, yes, please. Like, you, please. Yeah. Like yesterday only in Hari Parshat Bro's class, one devotee asked a similar question. You know, sometimes sense control is prescribed. Sometimes renunciation is prescribed. Sometimes Sharanagati is prescribed. Uh, so, you know, what, what actually should do? So, how to reconcile all this? So, then Hari Parshat Bro told, See, for different folks, means for different types of people, different processes are prescribed. So, it's, <clears throat> cannot deny that. Okay. Okay. Okay, Prabhu, you can read the purport. The conditioned souls within the clutches of illusory energy are all anxious to attain peace in the material world, but they do not know the formula for peace, which is explained in this part of the Bhagavad Gita. The greatest peace formula is simply this. Lord Krishna is the beneficiary in all human activities. Men should offer everything to the transcendental service of the Lord because he is the proprietor of all planets and the demigods thereon. No one is greater than he. He is greater than the greatest of the demigods, Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma. In the Vedas, Shveteshvatara Upanishad 6.7, the Supreme Lord is described as Tam Ishwarana Paramam Maheshwaram. Under the spell of illusion, living entities are trying to be lords of all they survey, but actually they are dominated by the material energy of the Lord. The Lord is the master of material nature and the conditioned souls are under the stringent rules of material nature. Unless one understands these bare facts, it is not possible to achieve peace in the world, either individually or collectively. 
this is the sense of krishna consciousness lord krishna is the supreme pro- predominator and all living entities including the greatest great demigods are his subordinates one can attain perfect peace only in complete krishna consciousness mm-hmm. yeah so this is uh, another way of describing the verse of course it may not exactly fit in the context but it's okay means that is that our acharyas also do sometimes so you can do that yeah unless one because if one doesn't understand these facts one will try to become a controller enjoyer and doer and one will get frustrated as we discussed one tries to be enjoyer it is anyhow and going to end in frustration so when one understands okay krishna is the real enjoyer and i i can become i can also enjoy by cooperating in his enjoyment yeah. so like that if one understands these things then will be one will be more peaceful yeah. one will not have unnecessary expectations in the, in the world and etc yeah. okay so this is a little summary of the chapter so initially we discussed karma yoga versus karma sanyas how both lead to the same goal but karma sanyas is difficult without purification by karma yoga so without purification karma sanyas is difficult and a karma yogi is then the qualities of uh, nishkam karma yogi we saw a karma yogi is dear to everyone he performs works only for purification and incurs no reactions kevala atma shuddha he does for only purification and therefore he doesn't because he is not doing anything for material desires even if some at a material level mistakes happen like in the course of fighting arjuna may have to kill somebody but still he will not incur any reaction because he is not doing for a material reason and uh, karma yogi sees everything carried out by the prakriti and swabhava and he stays happy in the city of nine gates so in that way he does not consider himself as the doer and he is not he doesn't consider himself as something is done by him na kurvan na kare yes something so with knowledge shining like the sun he is completely absorbed in the absolute truth tan tan buddhi so yeah then his spiritual vision is externally detached and internally focused yeah so he sees everything as an atma so he first sees that then on top of that he may see there are some material distinctions etc and then he is externally detached and internally is focused then he attains grace and is freed from you know, lust and anger so vimuktanam kama krodha vimuktanam then he gets liberated from uh, internally and means his heart is purified then he decides to renounce all the sense objects and prescribed duties and he wants to focus and he wants to fully meditate meditate on paramatma so that is of course prabhupada also summarizes more or less all these things in this paragraph okay so this is about the fifth chapter now we'll proceed to the sixth chapter so we'll see how much we can cover so the sixth chapter there are six sections so first is first section describes about yoga rudraksha and yoga ruda practice so how for a beginner in dhyana yoga he has to perform activities and eventually if his heart is purified he can fully focus on the meditation he is yoga ruda so these two who can be a yoga ruda so that will be talked about then the stages in yoga practice and samadhi so a similar description similar to yam niyam asan pratyahar so there are one two verses which describe those things and subsequently the consciousness at samadhi all those are discussed then the perfection of yoga realization of krishna as super soul so those all symptoms and you no know, stages different aspects of it are described ah, yeah. then actually the dis- discussion on no, mind uh, so chinchalam hi mana krishna so though that verses come then uh, arjuna says it's very difficult to control mind no? so that is rejected by arjuna in that sense means this process is difficult so arjuna admits like that so then uh, arjuna asks another question of the destination of a unsuccessful yogi so if one cannot attain perfection in this life so what will happen to him because he has uh, renounced all his prescribed duties so he is not getting benefit of that also and he is not get, getting benefit of this yoga path also 
So what what will his destiny show? So then Krishna explains that. Then at last Krishna tells how a devotee is a topmost yogi. So that will lead, that will connect to the next section of Bhagavad Gita, which is Bhakti Yoga. Next uh, six chapters deal with Bhakti Yoga. Okay, so the first section. Shri Bhagavan Vacha. Shri Bhagavan Vacha. Anashita karma phalam karyam karma karotiya. Anashita karma phalam karyam karma karotiya. So sanyasi cha yogi cha na niragnir na chakriya. So sanyasi cha yogi cha na niragnir na chakriya. Okay, so translation of Prabhupada. One who is unattached to the fruits of his work and who works as he is obligated is in the renounced order of life. And he is the true mystic, not one who lights no fire and performs no duty. So, <clears throat> so let me read it. This is the translation by Baladev Dabhushan, translation in as well as purport. In the sixth chapter, the method of yoga for one who has been purified through karma yoga and achieved control of the mind and the method of creating steadiness for even the person of unsteady mind are described. Mm -hmm. The Lord will teach Ashtanga Yoga, the culmination of Karma Yoga, which he taught previously. The Lord first praises Karma Yoga because of its practicality in two verses. He who performs his actions as duties, that should be done, Karyam, without desire for animals, food, sons or heaven, is a person fixed in Jnana Yoga, Sanyasi. And a person fixed in Ashtanga Yoga. Yeah. Both of these uh, states are achieved by execution of Karma Yoga. He is the real sannyasi, Not the person in sannyasa who has renounced things such as fire sacrifice, Niragni, or the yogi with half-closed eyes who gives up actions related to bodily maintenance, Akriya. It is recommended here that those who decide to practice Ashtanga Yoga should not suddenly give up prescribed actions. Yeah. So, so this verse is to say uh, what should be the prerequisite for practicing Dhyana Yoga. So it is Anashrita Karma Phalam and Karyam means he should be dutiful and he should be detached from the fruits. Not someone like uh, Na Niragnir means no, he has renounced his prescribed duties and no, he is uh, also renounced, he is neglecting the body. So that is not the symptoms but the internal consciousness. Internal purification is a symptom, not the external activities, not the external renunciation. Okay. Yeah, Prabhupada talks about uh, uh, Krishna consciousness and he compares uh, the Dhyana Yoga, etc. Okay, I'll skip it. Okay. The next, again, two verses that thing is being stressed again and again. Yam sanyasa mitipraha yogam tam vidhi pandava. Yam sanyasa mitipraha yogam tam vidhi pandava. Nahi asanyasta sankalpo yogi bhavati kashchana. Nahi asanyasta sankalpo yogi bhavati kashchana. What is called renunciation, you should know, be, know to be the same as yoga or linking oneself with Supreme, O son of Pandu. For one can never become a yogi unless he renounces the desire of sense So here the word sannyasa is uh, you know, a different meaning. Here the word sannyasa means renouncing the fruits of sense gratification. So before uh, the word sannyasa is referring to the renounced order. Yeah, so both are both have difference. Here sannyasa means performing work, renouncing desire for sense gratification. So that is astounding. Yeah. So if we if we don't have our Acharya's commentaries, we cannot understand you know, the flow, the technicalities, etc. Otherwise, one may think both sannyasa may be seen. One has not given up desire for sense gratification, he is not qualified for jnana yoga and astanga. Yes, you can read the highlighted portion. Therefore, when one is in complete knowledge, one ceases all material sense gratification or renounces all kinds of sense gratificatory activities. This is practiced by the yogis who restrain the senses from material attachment. But a person in Krishna consciousness has no opportunity 
to engage his senses in anything which is not for the purpose of Krishna. Therefore, a Krishna conscious person is simultaneously a sannyasi and a yogi. The purpose of knowledge and of restraining the senses as prescribed in the jnana and yoga processes is automatically served in Krishna consciousness. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a good statement by Prabhupada. Means we saw like you no know, the the earlier table. I think it is there in the fourth chapter. Yeah, so this is there. No? So in Bhakti Yoga, all these elements are included in this. So what Prabhupada told that uh, the Jnana Yoga, so, so that renunciation is already there. That means knowledge is there in Bhakti Yoga also. And Dhyana Yoga, meditation is there, which is also there in Bhakti Yoga. That happens automatically. So Karma Yoga, prescribed duties are there. Knowledge is a prime thing, is performing prescribed duties. Knowledge is a secondary thing. Meditation is a secondary thing. Devotion is also a secondary thing. In Dhyana Yoga, Knowledge is the primary thing and renunciation is the primary thing. But meditation and devotion are secondary things. Dhyana Yoga, knowledge is secondary, renunciation is primary and meditation is primary. Devotion is secondary. But devotion is also essential. Secondary means it's not, uh, it is also essential but it is not the focus. In Bhakti Yoga, prescribed duties are secondary. Means one can perform prescribed duties. It's not that everyone has to be in renounced order. Knowledge is also secondary. Meditation is secondary. Devotion is primary. So, <clears throat> so this is important. Of course, we have an OBA question also. Like, uh, you know, how all elements of all other process of yoga are included in bhakti yoga. So this is something that has to be written there. Means this has to be explained and elaborated. So, <clears throat> so initially, one is in Nishkam Karma Yoga. He does it for purification of heart. So that one will you know, give up the fruity mentality. So then one can perform Jnana Yoga or Dhyana Yoga. So knowledge is realized. Means he understands the philosophy, everything. And you know, his mind also becomes purified. Mind is also fully focused. So then... He will attain Brahma Jyoti or Vaikuntha. Depends upon what his desire is and know what is his alignment, etc. So automatically, like as Prabhupada told, Bhakti Yoga, automatically senses get purified in the course of performing Bhakti Yoga. We need not make a separate endeavor to purify senses. And Bhakti Yoga involves you know, like one is hearing about Krishna and you know, chanting, hearing about Krishna and speaking about Krishna. So one will automatically, as a byproduct, one will understand the philosophy, etc. And in the process of chanting and all, there is meditation on Bhagavan. So, so that way Bhakti Yoga includes all these things. And Bhakti Yoga, one will attain Vaikuntha or Golok. Yeah. Now Krishna is telling these two stages of Two levels of yoga, jnana yoga. Arurukshor mune munir yogam karma karana muchate. Arurukshor munir yogam karma karana muchate. Yoga rudas tasseva shama karana muchate. Yoga rudas tasseva shama karana muchate. So the translation, for one who is a neophyte in the Eightfold Yoga system, work is set to be the means. And for one who is already elevated in yoga, cessation of all material activities is set to be the means. Maybe you can read the purport. The process of linking oneself with the Supreme is called yoga. It may be compared to the ladder for attaining the topmost spiritual realization. This ladder begins from the lowest material condition of the living entity 
and rises up to the perfect self realization in pure spiritual life according to various elevations different parts of ladder are known by different names but all in all the complete ladder is called yoga and may be divided into three parts namely gyan yoga dhyan yoga and bhakti yoga the beginning of the ladder is called yoga rukshu stage and its highest rung is called yoga rudha yoga rudha concerning the eight fold yoga system attempts in the beginning to enter into meditation through regulative principles of life and practice of different sitting postures which are more or less bodily exercises are considered fruitive mental activities all such activities lead to achieving perfect mental equilibrium to control the senses when one is accomplished in the practice of meditation he ceases all disturbing mental activities a krishna conscious person however is situated from the beginning on the platform of meditation because he always thinks of krishna and being constantly engaged in the service of krishna he is considered to have ceased all material activities so <clears throat> so that is there so that renunciation happens so proper talked about yoga ladder so we will discuss that is this is different paths in the yoga ladder so initially jiva is there initially he is involved in the materialistic life so first he performs nishkama karma yoga which is described in the third chapter uh, till uh, he, third chapter he is there in, in the beginning stage and uh, fifth chapter is there in the advanced stage of nishkama karma yoga then how he attains how he wants to do gyana yoga it's described very little but gyana yoga means he basically nishkama karma yoga is perform prescribed duties without any fruity mentality then slowly he gets developed he also realizes atma gyan in to some extent uh, brahman also but he does not have so much knowledge so he understands that you no know, this world is a distraction and all so then he wants to renounce the world means he wants to give up prescribed duties and he wants to fully focus so gyan yoga means he has to be he has to take sanyas so then he he wants to study scriptures you know, and you no know, uh, increase his renunciation and you know, increase his knowledge he tries to contemplate on the you know upanishadic statements you no know, aham brahmasmi all these kind of things so then that is gyan yoga so gyan yoga if he attains perfection then he may attain brahma jyoti okay or instead or instead of gyan yoga he may do then he may go to gyan yoga so he may attain renunciation and all but he may decide that no i want to just meditate means no enough of study and all i just want to meditate on the parmatma means if he knows about parmatma and all then he may want to meditate so that that way also so either by study one can renounce means no develop increase his renunciation and or one may increase his knowledge about absolute truth or one may decide that okay i'll try through meditation i will you know purify my mind and all and i will uh, then i will also try to focus on the absolute truth so one may adopt dhyana yoga so dhyana yoga one may attain brahm yeah dhyana yoga perfection is not attained okay here it is written okay maybe like this we will explain so that will be easy so from nishkam karma yoga he may go to gyan yoga and gyan yoga he may attain this perfection brahma jyoti or nishkam karma yoga he can also go to dhyan yoga that is what is described here you no know, yoga rukshu and no aruruksha aruruksha muni yoga rukshu so while performing nishkam karma yoga is aruruksha muni and dhyan when he takes to dhyan yoga renounces the world and you no know, tries all this y- asanas and all and he his mind is controlled then he fully meditates he may go either to vaikuntha or brahma jyoti both are possible because parmatma if he chooses then he will go to vaikuntha 
otherwise he will go to brahma jyoti so from nishkam karma yoga he can go to gyan yoga and from gyan yoga he can go to dhyan yoga gyan yoga if he attains perfection he will go to vaikuntha or brahma jyoti or from dhyan yoga he can go to bhakti yoga so bhakti yoga he can attain goloka vaikuntha whatever or from gyan yoga he can also go directly to bhakti yoga so that's why you know like the cases of kumara sukadev goswami they were in gyan yoga and they have come to bhakti yoga so then <coughs> from dhyan yoga again from nishkam karm yoga he can start dhyan yoga and he can attain perfection or he can again go to bhakti yoga or a jiva can directly uh, go to bhakti yoga if you see gyan yoga and dhyan yoga na if they have a prerequisite nishkam karm yoga so without that you cannot start gyan yoga or dhyan yoga but bhakti yoga you can directly start it doesn't need any prerequisite so that we'll also see in the ninth chapter so then one can go to vaikuntha or goloka so this is okay any questions on this or what we discussed today is shikant through ji to to enter the vaikuntha uh, the bhakti yoga the prerequisite ek devotion is needed vaikuntha na actually there are two things you will study this in nod see vaikuntha one may want to attain a rasa with the narayan so for that bhakti yoga is needed but one may just attain vaikuntha as a citizen means lord is the king in vaikuntha and lord has his own entourage like you no know, who does services to lord and all and there are people who just stay in vaikuntha they may be happy just uh, you know meditating on narayan from distance something like that so the what we talk na sarupya salokya sarishti all these samipya all these are, are referred to liberation so that liberation is vaikuntha liberation vaikuntha liberation means they are like the citizens of vaikuntha but they are not the servants of lord so so that is a different type of liberation so that a dhyana yogi can get this we will also discuss more in the 7th chapter where a particular verse is there there so that is possible in dhyana yoga but a bhakti bhakti yoga let's say the shri vaishnavas and all they worship narayan and all so they will enter into a rasa with narayan either shantaras or dasiras okay sharad pro in question uh, yes pro ji so pro ji my question is uh, so if we see in material life or even in spiritual life mm -hmm. if we have to grow somewhere uh, like if one wants to get up early in the morning and currently is getting at 7 mm -hmm. so we ask him to uh, ask him for do it gradually like mm -hmm. wake up at 6:50 or 6:40 then 6:30 so gradually you should get up mm -hmm. even in spiritual life we also do start chanting at least one round then two then four like that yes but in uh, this case like yoga ladder so i think krishna has also given the yoga ladder so that everybody can be accommodated and slowly slowly one can progress on this path yes but why do we uh, emphasize on uh, bhakti yoga like we say that uh, all these other yogas karma gyan and uh, dhyan yoga can be uh, done in bhakti yoga and we can directly uh, do all this so why we try to uh, bypass the ladder means i know the importance of bhakti yoga but i'm just trying to uh, See, clear the doubt what, so <clears throat> you see the vedic context na vedic context is not like you no know, i mean there is no concept of preaching and all uh, so so vedic concept is like you no know, objective anyone can follow any spiritual path but everyone should follow some spiritual path so either you follow gyan yoga dhyan yoga or you start with nishkam karma and see what you, where you want to go or you follow bhakti yoga so that is the objective vedic vedic model is very objective it is not impo imposing a some, certain thing but vedic thing is you follow varnashrama and you do something 
either you want to be a sannyasi and you want to practice jnana yoga or dhyana yoga or you practice nishkam karma yoga and after that you decide where you want to go this life next life wherever you decide or you practice bhakti yoga so <clears throat> that is there but this preaching this move, you know this uh, giving krishna to others and all it start it was started by chaitanya mahaprabhu so so then so this thing has come like you no know, means giving bhakti to you know everyone trying to inspire people to take to bhakti and all so that has come so that is there so ideally what we should be relishing bhakti and then we should try to inspire people to take bhakti of course if we try to objective means of course there is sometimes you no know, some push and also further sometimes we may uh, try to tell in a particular way to push them but eventually we have to also educate them in this way so that they will make a very conscious choice to practice bhakti initially we may be a little you no know, pushy and you no know, we may little force and you no know, we may try to present in a particular way little, little uh, what to say little extreme way of you no know, how bhakti is the only thing and all but eventually we may have to also ed educate them so that they will make a conscious choice of practicing bhakti does it help or you have some further question yes prabhu sorry i was on mute yeah okay. yes it's quite clear yes prabhu okay thank you okay any other questions yeah one thing is bhakti yoga is uh, best in the terms of it is it will offer you the most intimate association with the absolute truth in form of bhagwan that to having a rasa with bhagwan so yes that, uh, so the result that, is highest in bhakti so yoga that way it is highest object means subjectively also it, it objectively also it has that highest so that way but uh, uh, yeah so the elements of dhyana and all and it is easy to practice because the grace of the lord is there and in kali yoga it is more it is simpler it it only it can be practiced properly but others others also may work but no very difficult to practice so those things are there but yeah but it's not like no in kali yoga krishna will be upset if someone wants to practice nishkam karma or gyan or dhyana etc yeah. okay. thank you okay any further questions anyone okay if no questions are there uh, okay then we'll stop here but yeah we'll mostly this chapter will complete in in the next month in october uh, but mostly the last week of october we'll see when we can have exam so accordingly you can start preparing shlok you can start preparing for shloka test and you know the shlokas which you are regularly reciting so that only will be there so you can start preparing that and mostly next next weekend i'll discuss the oba questions also because some questions are related to this chapter so i will discuss that and you can start writing oba also okay okay so thank you very much shila prabhupad ki jai shri bhagavad gita ki jai thank you hari krishna hari krishna